Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is why start Delta Run reduced voltage starters. Our objective is to introduce the why start Delta Run reduced voltage starting method. Reduced voltage starting methods reduce inrush current and modify acceleration and starting torque characteristics. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the primary resistor reduced voltage starters and motor connection diagrams lectures, both available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. As you are no doubt sick of me reminding you, the direct and instantaneous application of full voltage to a motor at standstill produces a tremendous surge of current known as inrush. Although brief, inrush can place an unnecessarily high demand on the electrical distribution network and industries often pay a financial penalty for such events. Additionally, the abrupt acceleration of a motor from standstill may damage the mechanical linkages like belts, chains, shafts, gears, and couplings the system uses to manipulate the applied load. It is for this reason, reduced voltage starting methods are employed. Reduced voltage starting methods include, but are not limited to, primary resistors, part winding, Y start delta run, soft starters, and motor drives. All these methods serve to limit inrush current and reduce mechanical stresses to the driven load. Today we'll discuss one of these methods, Y start delta run reduced voltage starters, also called star delta starters on an introductory level. After we've discussed timer relays, expect to revisit reduced voltage starters incorporating timers in later lectures. As you'll soon learn, the term reduced voltage relies upon some mathematical trickery. However, the effects are the same. When this technique is employed, a motor experiences less of an inrush and accelerates gently in comparison to a full voltage starter. As the title implies, Y start delta run reduced voltage starters use a Y configuration when starting a motor and a delta configuration in run mode. This implies that motors making use of this technique must be able to be placed in either Y or delta configuration. This rules out all three lead and nine lead motors since these motors are pre-configured by the manufacturer in an unalterable Y or delta configuration. Eligible for this technique are six and 12 lead motors. The commonality exhibited by these motors is that they are customizable and can be placed in either Y or delta configurations because both ends of all windings are accessible. The mathematical trickery surrounding a Y start delta run reduced voltage starter stems from a property inherent to industrial three-phase AC distribution networks. Recall that three-phase AC is characterized by three AC waveforms with identical magnitude and frequency, however, temporally offset from each other by a phase shift of 120 degrees. This 120 degree phase shift means at any given time, there is not only a voltage differential from a particular phase to neutral, but also a voltage differential between phases. This relationship is such that the line to line difference RMS value is always square root three or 1.73 times greater than line to neutral RMS value. The three line to neutral voltages are phase shifted 120 degrees with respect to each other as are the three line to line voltages. Consider a light industrial three phase AC system characterized by a 120 volt line to neutral and 208 volt line to line values. If this motor was placed in a Y configuration, each winding would experience the comparatively smaller line to neutral value of 120 volts RMS. If however, this motor was placed in a delta configuration, each winding would experience the comparatively larger line to line value of 208 volts RMS. Herein lies the mathematical trickery of the Y start delta run reduced voltage starter method. Although the system voltage remains constant, the different configurations see different aspects of the same system voltage. The Y configuration sees the comparatively smaller line to neutral voltage and the delta configuration sees the comparatively larger line to line voltage. Given voltage is the cause of current, a motor started in the Y configuration would therefore draw less current 
than one started in the Delta configuration given identical windings. The Y-Start Delta Run Reduced Voltage Starting Method takes advantage of this by starting a motor in a Y configuration and then, once the motor is accelerated for a predetermined period, the Y configuration is momentarily broken and then reconfigured as a delta. Each winding now experiences the larger line-to-line -line voltage. However, given the motor is not at rest, but rather already moving, the inrush current will not be as great. The Y-Start Delta Run Reduced Voltage Starting Method therefore serves to stepwise limit the inrush and mechanical stresses of the driven load. This technique need not be limited to just six lead motors. Consider a 12 lead motor necessitating connection to a low voltage source. Winding A1 is in parallel with winding A2, and similarly, B1 is in parallel with B2, and C1 is in parallel with C2. These parallel configurations can be placed in Y configuration to start using the comparatively lower line to neutral voltage, and then disconnected and reconfigured in a delta configuration to run using the comparatively higher line-to-line -line voltage. Similarly, consider a 12-lead motor necessitating connection to a high-voltage source. Winding A1 is in series with winding A2, B1 is in series with B2, and C1 is in series with C2. These series configurations can be placed in a Y configuration to start using the comparatively lower line-to-neutral voltage, and then disconnected and reconfigured in a delta configuration to run using the comparatively higher line-to-line -line voltage. Regardless, the switch from Y configuration to delta configuration uses different aspects of the same system voltage, and as a result, inrush current and mechanical stress is reduced. Notice the graph of inrush current for the Y-Start Delta Run Reduced Voltage Starter Method shows a transient spike characteristic of an open transition reduced voltage starter. As you recall from our preliminary discussion on this topic, an open transition reduced voltage starter briefly de-energizes the motor during a transition from start to run mode. The transition time between the Y configuration and delta configuration requires a measurable amount of time to take place due to the electromechanical nature of the switching apparatus and this spike is a product of the open transition period. We'll discuss solid state devices, devices without moving parts, in later lectures that minimize transition states and transient events. Recall the timing of the transition from the Y start to delta run mode affects the inrush current graph. Notice if the transition from the start to run takes place quickly, the motor is only given a short time to accelerate. Inrush current will be more. If, however, the transition from start to run mode takes place later, the motor is given more time to accelerate. Inrush current will be less. Thus far, we've examined only elemental diagrams of Y-start, delta run, reduced voltage starters in the most nebulous of terms. Let's take a look at a primary schematic making use of three contactors, S for start, R for run, and Y, obviously for Y, that selectively connect the windings in a Y or delta configuration. We'll be making use of a six lead motor, where winding A has terminals one and four, winding B has terminals two and five, and winding C has terminals three and six. This Y-start delta run reduced voltage starter can be summarized as two distinct stages. The start stage sees the closure of both the S and the Y contactor. The run stage is characterized by the closure of both the S and R contactor. It should be readily apparent that the simultaneous closure of the Y and R contactor is something to be avoided at all costs, since it would constitute a shorting of all three phases and a phase-to-phase -phase event characterized by an arc flash hotter than the sun. For this reason, the Y and R contactors are electrically and mechanically interlocked, as we'll later learn, to prevent this occurrence. Either the Y or R are closed, never both at the same time. When the Y contactor closes, it joins terminals 4, 5, and 6 as the central node of a Y configuration. Note the Y contactor has no overload contacts since it only serves to connect the central node. With the Y contactor closed, the closure of the S contactor 
connects this motor to primary voltage in a Y configuration such that windings A, B, and C experience the comparatively lower line to neutral voltage. Winding A receives phase L1, winding B receives phase L2, and winding C receives phase L3. Given voltage is comparatively less, the motor experiences comparatively less inrush current and begins to accelerate. Note that the S contactor does have overloads in series with it since it is delivering current to a motor. When the Y contactor opens, it breaks the Y configuration and primary current would stop flowing. This is the open transition. Upon closure of the R contactor, winding A is connected line to line from L1 to L2. Winding B is connected line to line from L2 to L3. And winding C is connected line to line from L3 to L1. This already spinning motor is now in a delta configuration such that windings A, B, and C experience the comparatively higher line to line voltage. Note the R contactor doesn't necessitate an overload since current through each winding will be experienced by the overload already in the circuit. Note the transition time between the opening of the Y contactor and the closure of the R contactor makes this an open transition reduced voltage starter because the motor windings are momentarily de-energized during this period. This open transition can cause transient spikes where magnitude is proportional to the degree of imbalance between the running motor and the primary voltage. Such disturbances can affect the supply and sensitive electrical equipment in the vicinity. Still, the staged reconfiguration of the motor windings yields less inrush and mechanical stress than a regular full voltage motor starter even when the transient spike is taken into consideration. Note, the motor connection diagram must be adhered to such that both Y and delta configurations produce the same direction of rotation. If the delta configuration produced an opposite rotation, the motor would be plugged in reverse counter to our intended purpose. Let's now examine a sample pilot ladder logic diagram that governs the operation of a Y start delta run reduced voltage starter. This example features an operator initiated start followed by an operator initiated transition from start to run. Rungs one and two govern both the Y and S contactors. Note the normally closed side of the mechanically interlocked run push button and the normally closed R2 electrical interlock would de-energize the Y contactor coil if either of these opened. We'll discuss this interaction in a moment. Rungs three and four govern the run contactor only. Note the normally open S2 contact in rung three. This prevents an operator from placing the motor in run mode without having first placed it in start. Additionally, note the normally closed Y1 electrical interlock. This prevents the R contactor coil from being energized if the Y contactor is already activated. Additionally, note the mechanical interlock between the Y and R contactor. As previously discussed, at no point should the Y and R contactor ever be simultaneously closed. The mechanical and electrical interlocks prevent this most heinous of circumstances from occurring. Note the e-stop, stop, and normally closed overload contacts serve to de-energize all three contactors and de-energize the motor. Let's walk through the ladder logic diagram and see how this Y-start delta run reduced voltage starter works. If an operator were to press start, both the Y and S contactor coils would be energized. When the Y contactor coil is energized, its associated contacts change to their opposite states. The Y1 electrical interlock opens and the Y primary contacts close. When the S contactor coil is energized, its associated contacts change to their opposite states. The S1 holding contact closes, as does the S2 electrical interlock, and the primary S contacts close. This motor is now in a Y start configuration. An operator can now release the start push button and the S1 holding contact maintains this last asserted state. After a predetermined period of acceleration, an operator can press the run button to transition from Y start to delta run mode. The now open side of the mechanically interlocked run push button 
de-energizes the Y contactor coil, and its associated contacts return to their deactivated state. The primary Y contacts open, momentarily de-energizing the motor. The Y1 electrical interlock closes. Given the mechanically interlocked run push button is now closed, the closure of the Y1 electrical interlock energizes the R contactor coil, and its associated contacts change to their opposite state. The R2 electrical interlock opens, the R1 holding contact closes, and the R primary contacts close. This motor has been placed in the delta run configuration. An operator can now release the run push button when the R1 holding contact maintains this last asserted state. If an operator were to press stop, it would de-energize all contactor coils and all associated contacts would return to their deactivated state. The S primary contacts open, the S1 holding contact opens, and the S2 electrical interlock opens. The primary R contacts open, the R2 electrical interlock closes, and the R1 holding contact opens. An operator can now release the stop push button and the spring return would return it to its ordinary deactivated state. This Y start delta run reduced voltage starter is ready to initiate another start run cycle. The fundamental flaw to our system as currently implemented is that it relies upon the judgment of an operator to initiate the transition from Y start to delta run mode. Operators, like most of humanity, have a reputation of being fickle mush heads and cannot normally be relied upon to make consistent and sound judgments based off only visual and audible clues. It is for this reason other automated methods are used to initiate the Y-start delta run transition. For example, the mechanically interlocked run push button package could be replaced with a mechanically interlocked rotational speed switch that switches to its opposite states when the motor reaches an acceptable transition speed. Note, since an operator's subjective judgment has been removed, it really wouldn't be necessary to include the S2 electrical interlock. The operator would still initiate a start by pressing and releasing the start push button. However, only when the motor has reached the set speed of the rotational speed switch does the system automatically initiate a transition from start to run mode. The R1 holding contact maintains the delta run configuration if the rotational speed switch is ever reset during a momentary lag in speed. Note the transition from Y start to delta run mode could also be time based rather than speed or operator based. We'll discuss reduced voltage starters using timers in later lectures. Here's a graph of line current for a super lightly loaded six lead motor started in the delta configuration. The vertical scale is set to five amps per division while the horizontal scale is set to 0.1 seconds per division. Notice the astrophreconomical current draw, peaking out at around 18-ish amps upon being instantaneously and directly connected to full line-to-line -line voltage. Additionally, note the motor accelerates briskly and reaches a stable current draw in less than one and a quarter divisions, meaning it took the motor just slightly longer than a tenth of a second to accelerate the applied load. This obviously wouldn't be the method of choice for a fragile electrical distribution network or applied loads necessitating controlled acceleration. In contrast, consider the graph of line current for the same super lightly loaded six lead motor started in the Y configuration. The vertical and horizontal scales are set to the same respective five amps per division and 0.1 seconds per division. When each winding is energized by the comparatively smaller line to neutral voltage, notice the motor now takes four-ish divisions or just under a half a second to accelerate the applied load. Additionally, note that current drop peaks out at only six amps. The six lead motor started in a Y configuration, therefore serves to limit inrush current demand and mechanical stresses to the applied load. Here's both curves superimposed on one another so you can compare the two methods. The delta configuration using line to line voltage is yellow. It is characterized by a substantial inrush and a brief acceleration period. The Y configuration using the comparatively smaller line to neutral voltage is in blue. It is characterized by substantially less inrush and substantially longer acceleration. Depending on when the transition between the Y start and delta run is made, you'd see a transition from the blue Y start curve to the yellow delta curve. 
Since Y start delta run reduced voltage starters are characterized by an open transition in which the motor windings are briefly de-energized, you would also expect to observe a momentary transient spike during the open transition. All right, this about wraps up our introduction to the Y start delta run reduced voltage starter method. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at Y start delta run reduced voltage starters. We learned reduced voltage starters are used to reduce inrush current and modify acceleration and starting torque characteristics. Only fully customizable motors with both ends of each winding accessible can make use of the Y start delta run reduced voltage starting method, thereby limiting its applicability to 6 and 12 lead motors and similar devices. When started in the Y configuration, each winding receives only the comparatively smaller line to neutral voltage, and once the motor reaches a predetermined speed, or after a predetermined period of acceleration, the windings are reconfigured in a delta configuration after a brief open transition, and each winding receives a comparatively higher line-to-line -line voltage. This stage transition serves to limit inrush current and mechanical stresses. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.